the first thing I want to do, and maybe this is like unconventional, <laughs> but the best to walk behind is oh. <laughs> your high school superlative. And once upon a time was something you didn't like and something that, you know, made you feel small, sexualized and, and really bad. And now you have really kind of taken that in stride to mean that you're a leader and what you're doing is leading a whole generation of female athletes. And so I want to know when you hear that and you reflect on that perspective shift, what goes through your head? Immediately, I go back to the very insecure girl in high school who I, I still feel the effects of getting nominated as that and wanting to be recognized as a great athlete and a great student and a funny and kind friend. And then I go to that and I say, wow, was that really the perception that I gave? So I'm still training my brain to have a different immediate reaction. But now I, I guess I don't even see myself as this, it's here you say that we're leading a charge for female athletes. Like it, it's almost like, really? Because to me, I am just creating and solving a problem for myself and my friends and my teammates. And I, I do see myself as a leader, but I also just say like, I have, I get obsessive about solving a problem and making it so no woman has, can ever experience what I experienced in the past that I'm, I'm just so focused on that. Like, I don't even call myself a founder. I just call myself a builder. I'm just building this thing and solving this problem. So I think when I hear that best to walk behind, it's, it's to me that more so speaks to my, I think the superpower that speaks to me most is, which is my loyalty to my teammates and the people I love that I will literally not ever let them down or ever let them be hurt. It's kind of like this loyal protection uh, th that I think is my greatest superpower. And so the the problem that you're solving, you you mentioned a few times there. What what is that problem? I am solving this idea of restriction that female athletes place on themselves. This idea, this feeling, and then the actual restriction that we get from our sports apparel. So when I was in high school, I restricted. I was so disciplined with myself that anytime I wasn't perfect. I restricted something and, and, it, and it started to be food. I also grew to be six feet tall in high school <laughs> from, I think, five, five, my freshman year, my body fundamentally changed. And so I realized that my sports problem was extremely restrictive and that reinforced those restrictive thoughts that were going on in my head. And so now I'm, I'm solving this problem by creating, give, trying to give female athletes the freedom to perform through their sports apparel, while also creating this community where athletes can show up as their goofy, bold, raw selves and just be exactly who they are and, and create an environment where they can also transcend into these incredible, what I call superheroes. And so I love the idea of solving this problem and creating a space for female athletes to really be themselves because oftentimes they're put in a box and we see the mm -hmm. drop in sports participation at that time just exactly to your point, when you're a freshman in high school and all of a sudden your body's changing, things are changing and you're like, oh, let's just not play sports mm -hmm. anymore, right? So, and, and others take that path and continue to play sports. And there, there are challenges. There are challenges that come with everything in life, but there are specific challenges to female athletes. And apparel is one of them. I mean, you look at a lot of the uniforms that their people are required to wear, women are required to wear. And one of the first things when we first connected that you told me about what you were creating was you can squat in these spandex and not feel like you have to adjust them and they're going to ride up or they're going to go in places you don't want. And I was like, damn, I need that. <laughs> like that doesn't exist. And we are put into often into these boxes where it's just like, well, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you all of a sudden had this idea what to, to create this, solution was there fear at all because i would imagine that something so simple, simple. <laughs> so simple. didn't exist you know what i mean 
Oh, entirely. And I think almost every day I, I had to talk myself out of the self doubt, like this exists already. This exists already. There's all of these name, every single athleisure company that exists. There's also the Nikes, the Adidas, the Pumas that I grew up playing in. And I said, why do I still feel terrible in these clothes? Like this clothing, this, this, maybe it's just me because my body insecurities, but let me go out and research and ask all my teammates. And they all have the same issues. And we see like different accounts, like soccer girl probs exposing the jerseys that are being stretched out on these, like, you know, our, our soccer team stretches out their jerseys on the plasma screen TV in the locker room. And it's like all of these ridiculous things. And I said, okay, th there is a problem here. I think if you look at it, you call it a box. It's a box that was created for us to fit into. It's like, we don't even get to create the box, right? It's, it's all of these things that we have been said, these are all your, the restrictions that you had to work with. Here you go. Be grateful for it. And I don't think in the same way that women's sports don't get any coverage or 4% of, of, you know, media coverage. Of course, they would never think that female athletes actually needed different sports peril than men. Of course, they don't care that our bodies are fundamentally different. You see, I mean, the correlation is incredible because if you see all these female athletes getting injured because the seasons are built for men and not for female athletes, it's because the whole system is designed for male athletes. And male athletes are some of our biggest allies because they're like, you guys put in the same amount of work as we do, probably even more, and you don't get paid to do it, and you're completely under-resourced. So, um, for us, it's like, how, how do we eliminate the box entirely and build it from the ground up of what we want to create, but it's such a simple problem yet, you know, this, you interview women all the time, the world doesn't listen to women. It's like, you can, you can give them a microphone, but like, you have to listen and put their ideas into action. And that's this, that's, that's all we're doing. You're so right. Because you think about title nine. Last year, we celebrated the 50th anniversary, and there are a lot of people who sit there and say, well, isn't this great? Look at all the progress we've made in 50 years. And while that is true, there's the and, there's still so much farther we need mm -hmm. to go. And I think a, a lot of times, and I'm, I'm curious if you have the same experience, when I tell people, I talk to female athletes, I cover female or women's sports, They'll, they'll nod. Yeah, cool. And then every now and then a guy will say to me, well, you, did you know that? And it's something that we have lived and it's because their daughter, their sister, their niece, their girlfriend has experienced it. And all of a sudden it becomes relevant to them. Mm -hmm. But for us, this is something that we've lived for a lot of female athletes. This is something we lived. So I want to dive into your, your sports journey and where, you know, you played collegiate soccer at a mm. prestigious university you mm. did well so what let's let's rewind though back to elementary school back to middle school back to high school how did you find soccer and why did you play I was so grateful to grow up in a household where my parents are annoyingly obsessed with sports I, I don't think we watched anything other than ESPN I'm and I I that's not a joke and my grandpa like worked in the parking lot they had Anaheim Angels so we were always at Angels games, at any sporting event. My brother was always playing sports or I was playing sports. My parents were like, you, you don't have another option because we love sports so much. Like you're just going <laughs> to go play them. And I got real, I was really lucky that my parents treated us equally. If my brother was playing three sports, I was playing three sports. If he was playing four, I was playing four. Um, if he got a new bat, I got this. So I didn't know anything other than like this equitable world between men or girls and boys at the time, because my parents were so adamant about us having the same amount of things. At the same time, like my dad, whenever he would take my brother out for batting practice, like I would get the same amount of reps as he would. Granted, I wasn't great at shagging, so I was just doing cartwheels <laughs> all the time, <laughs> but I didn't know any different. And so my parents thrust me into as many sports as I wanted to play, which was, I mean, it's the greatest gift of all, and they sacrificed so much of their time and money for that. So I cannot deny that privilege that I had. Um, I think I just ended up falling in love with volleyball and soccer. Soccer, because to me, it's like poetic. And <laughs> for anyone who's played very competitively, they'll understand what I mean. But I just love the patterns of the sport. And um, I just think it's a beautiful, a beautiful game. And it's 
all it's never the same and that's kind of the way my mind works so soccer became my passion I was lucky enough to be on an incredible club team growing up again because I lived in, in an amazing county growing up I had access to that and those resources I had access to a team where everyone was going division one and my parents were willing to drive me everywhere to um, all of these tournaments. And I just cannot deny, like, I would not be where I am today without that support. So, but that was my life. And it was, it was like friends going to the beach, sports and uh, school. <laughs> I was like, what was the last one? <laughs> yeah, I had to go to school. Um, and I, and I think growing up in Southern California, you just have access to year round sports and being outside and so it was just a phenomenal environment to grow up in.